Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Mishpaka. And this is your host, Brian Anthony. Ben Yai with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Your host, Brian Anthony with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Reporting to you live from behind enemy lines. Reporting to you live from the United States of Israel. We say peace and shalom. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show. So, um, we're going to call this one, It's All in His Hands. It's all in his hands. But before we get to the text, we're going to be coming out of uh, Apocalypse, Apocalypse of Baruch and the Assumption of Moses. And then over here, uh, out of the old school, Old Testament pseudepigrapha, we're going to come out of four Baruch, four Baruch. But um, let me give you some things, the jewels to think about before we get started. So, um, Demona Israel, guys. Some say they got hit uh, in the strikes, you know, with the bombs got through, it got through the Iron Dome, which is then the Patriot batteries, and that's rare. And now there's, I understand they're kicking out the quote unquote black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, some say it's um, 12, some say 45, some say as many as 60 and more. Even those who have served um, in this quote-unquote military force there, um, they're saying, y'all got to go. So, um, there is a um, pastor here in the States, a Hebrew Israelite pastor who's... Um, saying he wants to raise money, buy them land, and bring them here, right? Bring them here. And he said a figure that sounded large to me, to him, he sounded like it was a piece of cake. Okay. So um, that, that goes to, let me ask you guys, where is Israel? Because we have some that say that, um, you know, they went out of their turn, like they weren't gathered to be there yet. And they went, they were still in time out and they went there. So they get deported. Okay. So if that's the real Israel, that could be, I mean, if that land is the real Israel, that could be uh, what happened there. But what if the most High said he's going to gather us and bring us into our own land? What if they come back here and, and uh, that pastor gets them the land and they, because it said it's as many as 2,000 of them. So that apparently he wants to welcome all of them to come here. What if the real Israel is in North America, is in the States? <laughs> He's going to gather us all into our own land, right? From all the countries. We were scattered because they, they, they would fit the scattered category. What do you think about that? I mean, it's possible, man. I mean, the, this land... Mass over here didn't just appear in 1492. Okay, it's been here since the beginning. Something had to be here. Somebody had to be doing something here. You don't think anything in that book took place here? Hmm, interesting. Another thing I want to talk about right quick, man, that for, for those of you in the 21st century, stuck on the 66 books, you know, basically a slave Bible, what they gave you. I mean, you have to expand, you have to grow. The, the, the knowledge is increasing and you're not on that, that you, you're not getting that type of knowledge. You're stuck. The same sermons that was preached 50 years ago with all the missing information and they just plugging it in with whatever and, and you're using the same old stories. That's why you haven't grown spiritually. You haven't grown To, to the understanding, to the level that we need to be. You, you don't understand nationhood. There's a lot of things that, but you know, we were all a victim of that. But once we learned that, hey, it wasn't 66 books when King James put his Bible out in 1611. 
all those books made the final cut, 80 to 81 books. But between 1611 and now, those other books, they disappeared. You have to buy it separately. And then there were more. And we're going, we're going to get into that now. There were more books that, that releases a lot of the mysteries. Have you ever wondered why the Bible speaks so highly of Mary? I mean, the mother of Yahshua. Like, she has favor. She's esteemed above all women in the Bible. But if you ask somebody any something, something about it, they won't know. They know what well, she was. Yeah, she was mother. She was a virgin. <laughs> well, you know, so it, that wouldn't be, you know, okay. That, that's it. That's 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 pretty much it. I ask her, hey, what's what was Mary's mother's name? What was her father's name? What tribe was she from? Where was she born? How did she grow up? Is it true that Mary only had one child? <laughs> yes, it's true that Mary was a virgin. See, that's why the Catholics look at her different because they have the other books. Because yes, Mary had one child, Yahshua. Is it true that Joseph had other wives? Yes, it's true. Is it true that Joseph's kids all came from other wives? Yes, that's true. Is it true that Mary was 14 years old when they were wed? It was, it was, it was um, yeah, 14. It was 14. And then they were betrothed, and he was in his 60s. So that's why you don't hear about him when Yahshua gets old, man. He's probably dead. And uh, so Mary, that, that Yahshua is her only begotten son as well as the father's only begotten son. So he has no older brothers or sisters by his mother, nor any younger brothers or sisters by his mother. But he has brothers and sisters by his earthly father, Joseph, because he had children by other women before. See? And if you didn't if you didn't have these other books, you'd be, I mean, you'd be ignorant. You'd be saying ignorant things and not even knowing it, you know? Ignorance is no excuse. You know, people say they want to learn it and they want to teach it. Okay, well, go the extra mile. You know, do your due diligence. Yeah, you know, even in some of Paul's writings, you know, when he's saying some things, he said, this is of me and this is of the Ruach HaKadosh. Then he said, if, if those of you have the Ruach HaKadosh, then verify what I'm saying. So that, in other words, he's saying your spirit is going to tell you if it's right or if it's wrong. So you can't be scared. Oh, oh I ain't going to read that book. Why? They, Master said, I can only read these 66. Master said, Master said. Okay. Well, let's move on, guys. It's all in his hands. So we're going to start off um, in Baruch. For Baruch. Is this one here? Hold on. One moment here. Okay, guys. For Baruch. And this says, look. Things omitted from Jeremiah the prophet. So this could be in Jeremiah's writing, but they added it with Baruch. Okay? So if you don't buy these books, if you don't want to know, if it's, read it. Pray about it. Let, if you have the Ruach HaKadosh, he's, he's going to tell you if what you're reading is true or not, if it's really from the prophets or not. Look at it and see if it's coming to pass. You know, don't, don't worry about them dating it. Oh, this is first century, third century. Man, nobody don't care about what they what the dates they can put on our work. They, they don't understand it. That's why they why they take it and hide it if it wasn't if it wasn't authentic. Okay. So let me go ahead and read this. And this is uh this is um, for Baruch, right? Not one, two, three, four. For Baruch, chapter one, verse one. And it says, it happened when the children of Israel were taken captive by the king of the Chaldeans that God spoke to Jeremiah saying, Jeremiah, my chosen one, rise up 
and get up out. It says, rise up and get out of this city, you and Baruch, because I am going to destroy it for the multitude of the sins of those who inhabit it. So a lot of us are hearing now in Babylon to leave, to get up out of here. And then a lot of us are crying out to leave, to get up out of here. It's going to take something. For your prayers are like a firm pillar in the middle of it and like an unbreachable wall encircling it. So now rise up and get out before the host of Chaldeans surrounds it. So his prayers was keeping him out. But the Most High said, I'm the one that's going to destroy this city. And we're going to find it out, guys, that they lied to us in history, that they tried to always tell us that somebody came in and destroyed the temple, sacked the city, burned it. No, no, the most high, just like the earth, the world. I don't care about no weapons of mass destruction. It ain't going to destroy nothing. The most high is going is to be the one to destroy it. Man is not going to destroy it. He created, this is what all the books are saying, guys. And we, we're going to see that here today, too. And it says, so he tell, he's telling them, the host of the Chaldeans surrounds it, telling uh, Jeremiah and Baruch to get out. And Jeremiah, he said, and Jeremiah answering, saying, I implore you, Lord, allow me, your servant, to speak before answering. I mean, to speak before you. And the Lord said to him, speak, my chosen one, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah spoke, saying, Lord Almighty, are you delivering the chosen city into the hands of the Chaldeans so that the king may boast with the multitude of his people and say, I prevailed over the holy city of God. He's talking about the city and the people. <coughs> Excuse me. Surely not my Lord, but if it is your will, let it be destroyed by your own hands. See, that's the prophet saying that, Jeremiah. Let it be destroyed by your own hands. He told us in one of them other books. Yeah, I don't know if I believe it was Enoch or something. He said, I, I destroyed it. He said, I'm going, I built it. I'm going to be the one to destroy it. And the same thing with the, the city, the holy city, and the people, and the earth. So they're not going, the weapons of mass destruction is not what they think it is, or it's going to be prevented. And Yahuwah said to Jeremiah, since you are my chosen one, rise up and get out of this city, you and Baruch, because I am going to destroy it. I am going to destroy it for the multitude of the sins of those who inhabit it. For neither the king nor his host can come into it unless I first open its gates. He said, I got to first open its gates. He said, unless I first do it, they can't even come in here unless I, I open it up. It's the holy city. So rise up and go to Baruch and tell him these words. And rising up at the sixth hour of the night, get up on the wall of the city. And I will show you that unless I first destroy the city, they cannot come into it. After saying these things, the Lord departed from Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, that was for Baruch, the whole chapter one. Okay, guys. So the enemy's been lying, saying they sacked the city and burned it and tore it down. It's not how it happened. Most High did it. He broke it down. The angels broke it down and burned it. And then let them in and say, come, come get it. But there were things committed, guys, to the earth. Like what they found the um the lost book of the of the writings of Moses, the sealed book of Moses. Right? And there were some other things committed, jewels and things like this. I'm going to read about this now. The Apocalypse of Baruch. Um, chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 1 right here. And it says, And the Lord said unto me, This city shall be delivered up 
for a time, and the people shall be chastened during a time, and the world shall not be given over to oblivion. Okay, this is verses start at four, verse two right here. And it says, Dost thou think that this is a city of which I said, on the palms of my hands have I graven thee? This building now built in your midst is not that which is revealed with me. So in other words, you know, they thought they had really built something and they did. But he's saying, this ain't, this is not it. This is not what's revealed with me, Jack. It's a more splendid city, you know, so, but we're going to build it again. And he's going to come and bring the new one. You know, that's what we we got to keep building Jerusalem. And they're like I questioned earlier, where is the real Jerusalem? Because if he gathers us together, he said he's going to put us in our own land. Right. So where is our own land? Is it Africa somewhere? Somewhere in Africa? Somewhere in Asia? Somewhere in the Middle East? Somewhere in Europe? Yeah. Maybe the States, one of somewhere in the States or the islands. We'll see where they gather us to, where we gather to, because he's going to grab us from all nations, from where we're scattered, remember? That's the prophecy. Okay, so let me let me read this again. This is the Apocalypse of Baruch, chapter 4. And this is starting at verse 2 right here. We're going to go 2 through 7, and actually. Um, we're going to keep going. Does thou think that this city is a city which I said, on the palms of my hands I have graven thee? This building now built in your midst is not that which is revealed with me. That it which is prepared beforehand here from the time when I took counsel to make paradise and showed it to Adam before he sinned. But when he transgressed the commandment, it was removed from him and also paradise. And after these things, I showed it to my servant Abraham by night among the portions of the victims and again, also, I showed it to Moses on Mount Sinai when I showed to him the likeness of the tabernacle and all its vessels. And now, behold, it is preserved with me also. Hallelujah. Okay. It says, Paradise. Go, therefore, and do as I command thee. Okay. This is chapter 5, Baruch. And I answered and said, So then I am de destined to grieve for Zion, for thine enemies will come to this place and pollute thy sanctuary. We know that the U.S. is the, all of Babylon. See, there's a lot of people that's loving Babylon right now. It's going to get plundered, man. It's going to get destroyed. He's bringing in nations. And really, the nations are supposed to join in the one. They, they, had, they had the conference the other day. And then China say, oh, I'm glad. We're we glad they're joining together under the guise of what, global warming, of climate change. World governance is what they said. Modi spoke and Xi Jinping and, and uh, you know, Biden hosted it. He's the one who put it together. So everything's here. Check. Antichrist. Check. False prophet. Check. Mark of the beast. Check. One world government. Check. The gangs are here. Okay, let's read, guys. It says, the inheritance into captivity. Wait a minute. That's not what we're Let's start at the top of um, chapter five here, verse one. And I answered and said, so then I am destined to grieve for Zion, for thine enemies will come to this place and pollute thy sanctuary and lead thine inheritance into captivity and make themselves masters of those whom thou hast loved. And that, that our, that's already happened. So it's time for our deliverance, guys. And then it talks about, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Okay. And they will depart again to the place of their idols and will boast before them. And what wilt thou do for thy great name? And the Lord said unto me, my name and my glory have an eternal duration. Ooh eternal duration and my judgment shall maintain its right in its own time. See everything in its time. And thou shalt see with thine eyes that the enemy will not overthrow Zion 
nor burn Jerusalem. See how they done lied to us? That's why they had to hide this here. Nor burn Jerusalem, but the ministers of the judge for the time. But do thou go and do whatsoever I have said unto thee. And I went and took Jeremiah and I do and Sariah and Jabesh and Gedaliah. Remember, Gedaliah was the one who they took to, to find the other book of Moses and the honorable men and of the people. And I led them to the valley of Kedron and I narrated to them all that had been said to me. See, the prophets was getting this information real time, letting the people know this is what's happening. And then like as soon as they see it, a day or two later, it is happening quick. A week later, it's happening. It ain't taking six years for this stuff to come to pass. But now some of the stuff they said still coming to pass. But they was getting it like they was getting it. All different prophets was getting it. And they lifted up their voice and they all wept. And we sat there and fasted until the evening. This is uh, chapter six, verse one. And it came to pass on the morrow that lo, the army of the Chaldees surrounded the city. See, they had just saw it in the vision, in the dream or whatever. And on the next day, they showed the army showed up, surrounded the city. And at the time of the evening, I, Baruch, left the people and went forth and stood by the oak. Stood by the oak. And was grieving over Zion and lamenting over the captivity which had come upon the people. And lo, suddenly a strong spirit raised me and bore me aloft over the wall of Jerusalem. And I beheld, and lo, four angels standing at the four corners of the city, each of them holding a torch of fire in his hands. And another angel began to descend from heaven and said unto them, hold your lamps and do not light them till I tell you. See, it's a hierarchy. The order of the chain of command. You just can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. Even as one of these big, strong angels. You see what I'm saying? From the bottom to the top, it's always, it's bigger than you. For I am first sent to speak a word to the earth and to place in it what the Lord, the Most High, hath commanded me. And I saw him descend into the Holy of Holies and take from thence the veil and the holy ark and the mercy seat and the two tab uh, tables tables and the holy raiment of the priest and the altar of incense and 48 precious stones. 48, 12 times four. You say 48 precious stones wherewith the priest was adorned. Hmm. And all the holy vessels of the tabernacle. And he spoke to the earth with a loud voice. He spoke to the earth. Earth, earth, earth. Hear the word of the mighty God and receive what I commit to thee. Mm. And guard thou them until the last times. Remember when I told y'all to dig into the earth? It's time to get it back. When we come out, we coming out with great substance. We might get some of this right here. God says, guard thou them until the last times so that when thou art ordered, thou mayest restore them so that strangers may not get possession of them. See, they didn't get everything. They always lied and say, oh yeah, they sacked it, burnt it. And now we see now that the angels did it, broke it down and, and stole everything. Nope, nope, nope. We finna get it back now. For the time cometh when Jerusalem also shall be delivered up for a time until it is said, that it is again restored forever. Uh-oh. See, that hadn't been yet, guys. That's about to come now. Verse 9, it says, that is again restored forever. Verse 10, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up. And after these things, I heard that angel saying, those angels who held the lamps, let me read that again. After these things, I heard that angel saying unto those angels who held the lamps, destroy therefore and overthrow its walls to its foundations, lest the enemy should boast and say, we have overthrown the wall of Zion. See, the most high is not going to let him do it. He had to do it. He, he had the angels to destroy it. Just like the earth. They think they got, oh, they got the weapons of mass destruction. No, 
They, they can't destroy this earth. The Most High is the one who built it. He going to destroy it. Yeah, that's right. That's reserved to him. Okay. And it says, And we have burnt the place of the mighty God. So that's, that's what they want to claim, that they did that. And ye have seized the place where I had, I had been standing before. Now the angels did as he commanded them. And when they had broken up the corners of the walls, a voice was heard from the interior of the temple. After the wall had fallen, saying, Enter! Ye enemies, wow, the Most High gave it to them. They ain't take nothing. Enter, ye enemies, and come, ye adversaries. For he who kept the house hath forsaken it. Mm. And I, Baruch, departed. And it came to pass after these things that the army of the Chaldees entered and seized the house. And all that was around it, and they led the people away captive, and slew some of them, and bound Zedekiah the king, and sent him to the king of Babylon. Hallelujah. May the Lord have a blessing on the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Until the next time, guys, I hope this was a blessing to you. I mean, we can see. We can see these same things happening now. We see the fall of Babylon now. We're walking through it. We're living through it. And he's going to protect us. And we can, some of us are going to be, write, be able to write about it and be able to make songs about it and movies about it and tell about it and how they resisted and owned Babylon. The earth is about to give us back this treasure. The Most High is restoring us and the land and restoring us to the land. Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High Yah. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Till the next time. Love y'all. Peace and blessings. Amen.